Hello, I'm Reverend Scott Whipperman, pastor here at First Presbyterian Church in Helena, Montana, and we welcome you to our worship service today. I'd like you to know that regardless of who you are or where you are in your journey of faith, you're welcome here at First Presbyterian Church. Our gospel reading, our second reading today, also from the Gospel of Luke. And Jesus once again is speaking. But to, to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other to them also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks of you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is it to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The word of the Lord. Well, this reading here opens with this strange line, but to, to you who are, and shall I maybe insert, still listening. Because if you look at the verses right before this, this is Luke's version of the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes show up in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew, and they show up in the Sermon on the Plain in Luke. And in Luke's Beatitudes, that's different from the Sermon on the Mount. Both of them say, blessed to the poor, to the hungry, to those who are mourning or weeping, to those who are being persecuted for my name's sake. But then Luke goes on and adds, after the blesseds, some woes. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are fed well now. Woe to you who are laughing now. Woe to you who, who others speak well of you. And it may well have been after getting done with those woes, some people stopped listening. And so Jesus says this to you who are still listening. And just in case I haven't shaken you up enough, love your enemy. Jesus is asking quite a bit of those who are listening to him here. Love your enemy. Be kind to them. Pray for them. May they be blessed. He's really shaking people up here. But this is all because of God's grace and the gratitude that we should have for that grace that God pours out upon us. Now, this is Pledge Sunday, and you all may be grateful for the fact that for the last three Sundays of this pledge campaign, I haven't been preaching about money, but I don't want to disappoint you, so we'll talk about money today. <laughs> and what better way to talk about money than to talk about CPAs, right? 
Lona gave me this little pamphlet that had this story about a CPA. And when he was a young child, he went to work. And he was getting paid 50 cents a day for his work during the summertime. And at the end of the first week, he got $3. And he ran home to show it to his mom. And she said, good. Now let's give 30 cents of that to the church on Sunday. And the boy looked a little strange. His mother went on to explain, we tithe 10% of what we get. And 10% of your $3 is 30 cents. So we had to tithe that on Sunday. Because what we're really doing is we're giving back to God what God has given us. And so the boy, maybe somewhat reluctantly, but he went along and he tithed his 30 cents that Sunday. And he did that for the rest of the summer. And then school started, and he couldn't work five in, f during the week. But the, his employer said, if you want to come in on Saturdays, you can work on Saturdays. And so he came in on that first Saturday. After the day was done, he expected to get 50 cents, like he'd gotten per day during the summer. But he got a dollar instead. And the boy thought, hmm. Maybe there's something to this tithing stuff. <laughs> and he tithed ever since. He went off to war in World War II, and when he came back, he started his own accounting firm. And he tithed through that. And he had the opportunity to counsel lots of people about their personal finances. And he went on to say that frequently he would have maybe a young couple come in and they would complain that after they got done paying all the bills they had, they had nothing left at the end of the month. And so the CPA would say, said to them, well, would you like a surefire way to have more money at the end of the month? And of course they said yes. And he said, well, in, in the instance of one couple, you're making $30,000 a year. So take $3,000 and put it into a separate account. And I want you to put it in that separate account because this is money that you're going to give to God. And I want it in a separate account so that you don't spend it on the heating bill. But I'm going to have you put it in a separate account because we're going to do an experiment. You put this money... 10%, a tithe, into that other account. And if at the end of the year you're not better off financially, well, then just take the money back out of the account. But if you are better off, then give that money in that account, that 10%, to God. And to some of his clients that he knew personally, he would say, and I'll tell you what, if at the end of the year, you're not as much better off as I expect you to be, I will, you know, if you are as, as well off as I expect you to be, I will double your $3,000, so you'll have $6,000 to give to God. I suspect at this point in the conversation, it, a Mary Poppins moment might have come in, and you might say, you know, you are not codfish raise that jaw, you know, because I'm sure people were shocked to hear this, him say this, that if they followed this experiment, and if it worked, he would double the money they'd have to give to the church. He said no one ever took him up on that offer because no one needed to. They all had more than they expected, and they all gave more than the 10% that they were so grateful for the way things worked out. Now, how does this work? Did he have some secret financial formulas? Did he know that, okay, if we put 10% away, maybe we'll be a little bit more conscious about how we spend our money, and we'll cut out some of the indulgences that we have, um, and then we'll have more money left over or maybe it was as they were being more conscious about their finances, they paid off some of the debts they had. 
so they didn't have those debts anymore, so now they were in better financial shape at the end of the year. Or, who knows? Maybe they just stopped impulse buying when they did this. And the pamphlet doesn't say this, but maybe he gave them a little counseling of how to come up with this 3000 to put away. You know, he might have told them if they didn't have it right away to drop in this account, they each month put one twelfth of that 3000 in there, $250 each month, put it in there. And at the end of the year, you'll have that $3,000 in that account. And as I said, if you're not better off, then you got $3,000. You can use that. If you are, give it to God. He told this same story to some business people. There was a businessman whose business was having a hard time, and he asked him if he was tithing the profits from his business. And the man did that because he was, the business was turned down, and he was afraid that he might have to lay off some of his employees, something that he didn't want to do. But he started tithing what his business made, and lo and behold, the business turned around. And he could hardly keep up with the demand for his business. Are there some secrets here, some financial secrets, that if you do this, that we can figure out that all this is going to work out? No. He was just saying, trust in God. He was just following Malachi, who said that Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me on this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I do not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will not be enough room to store it. That's all he was saying. Trust in this. Now, he might be saying, but you told us this was an experiment. And an experiment sounds like we're testing something. And I think I recall somewhere it's saying, do not test the Lord your God. So this sounds a little dangerous, right? But in what Malachi just wrote, the words of God, God said, bring in the tithe and test me on this if I don't make things better. Bring in a tithe and see if I don't bless your life. Jesus also had some things to say on this. It's not just in the Old Testament. Jesus, in our reading today, said, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured out into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Now remember, Christ is shaking the crowd up a bit here, right, with what he's been telling them. And just in case they hadn't gotten the point, he then goes on a little bit later to say, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And then a little bit later, even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies and do good to them and lend to them without any expectation of repayment. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. Lend to your enemies without any expectation of repayment. Give 10%, a tithe of what you have. I think what Christ is saying here is those who can be trusted with a little can be trusted with a lot. How we deal with what we have deals, predicts how we can deal with much more. And if we show that we deal well with what we have, with the little we have, tells us that we'll be, prompt, we'll be trustworthy of even more 
and more will be blessed to us. Now, you might say that this sounds like it's getting a little close to prosperity gospel, right? Do good and God will be great to you. But these are God's promises. And the motivation here is not to be trustworthy with a little, not to tithe so that we will get more. But it is in being trustworthy with little, we will get more. If we behave the way Christ calls us to behave, we will be that much better in our life. We will be filled with more blessings. So those who are good stewards of a little will be trusted to be stewards of much more. Like I said, the CPA didn't have any special financial tricks or schemes that made this work. It was just his faith in God's word and urging others to step out in that faith onto God's word. Do what he says. See what happens. So God proclaims, are you still listening? I am gracious. I am a gracious God. Test me on this, will you? 